it's Lisa here. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the brushes for the Vintage Tails and then we're going to move on to some tips and tricks that I use in my work to achieve a real vintage look. I'll be using the Aging Texture Canvas in this demo. But first I want to do is just turn off the texture so that we can explore the texture of the brushes without the canvas effect for now. So I've just gone ahead and made my background a creamy color. We're first going to dive into the sketches and shaders and just working with a light sketch work brush. This I designed for just your quick kind of sketch work. It's a nice light brush that just allows you to feel out the shapes and not be too worried about perfection works really well for some rough sketches and what i usually do is i keep that layer in my final artwork and I'm going to show you later how exactly I, I do that. So on a new layer, I usually start with my final line work. And my go-to is Lisa's pencil. This has a lovely kind of all-rounder pencil feel to it. And I vary my pressure as I create that line work just for some uh, variation in the line work uh, weight and that gives it a more authentic look. Our chalky sketcher is more of a kind of a chalky texture. I tend to use this more for shading but if you want more of a kind of a charcoal, chalky look to your line work, this brush is perfect for that. So I'm just going to do a few lines with that. So moving on to the scratches and shaders, I, I generally use these uh, when I'm kind of completing my artwork, but I'm just going to show you on uh, this sketch layer. In fact, I'm going to create a new layer. And the reason why I like doing that with the shading and um, the scratches is that I can control the opacity and I can even use a different blending mode if I want to. So the hard uh, pencil scratches are really great to create that kind of classic etch work look to the drawing. And you can experiment with cross lines as well if you like to create like a hatch effect and what I like to do is control the opacity of that and as I mentioned I even like changing the blend mode just depending on what I have underneath if it's a different color underneath so I'm just going to leave it on normal for now and I'm going to bring it up to the full opacity and then the soft pencil I love using that on the edges of my work like that so that gives it kind of really a scratchy, dirty, kind of vintage look to it. And I'm going to show you some examples in my work where I've used that and how you can incorporate it in your own work. So the quirky shade of detail, this have some lovely kind of weird quirky, whoops, markings and shading. And for the cross hatch, the gravy cross hatch, I love using this for more intense texture. So if I just fill a larger area so you can start seeing that actual cross hatch. And you'll see it's got like kind of dirt in it. It's really great for adding texture in larger areas and as I said, some depth and intensity. And then the powdery is a 
fabulous kind of all-rounder shader and you can build up the texture the more you work over the same area and then power, uh, dusty is more of a subtle kind of chalky finish to it so if you want something that's not as intense as those this works really well and as a same with the others you can just build it up go over the same area so that kind of covers the the dry medium I'm just gonna turn that off and I want to create a layer underneath my sketch it's getting confusing because I haven't labeled them but we're gonna move on to some of the wet brushes and I hope I've managed to label them to give you an idea of the effects you're going to get. So the natural watercolor is just a kind of an all-rounder watercolor texture. And as with all watercolor brushes, you want to go slow and steady with your strokes. And you also don't want to be lifting your pencil as you work. If you do, you will see that overlap. So what I recommend is instead of coming down into the ends and adding, you could do that, it's not a problem, and then come in with a smudger, I often use the rugged and wet for smudging, and just smudge that, that's not a problem. Or what you could do is coming over to the adjustments and liquify, and you can simply just push that paint into the corners and into the edges so the beauty of that is it keeps the lovely hard edge to the watercolor brush without the need to smudge it. So the patchy uh, watercolor brush is exactly that. It has patches in it and kind of unpredictable, which is quite nice. For example, it probably we might be missing a patch here, but what I'll do is I'll just carry on painting a different leaf just to give you a sense of this brush. And here we have a darker bit coming through. So it gives you that lovely color variation without using stamps or any other kind of accent brushes. So that's nice for unpredictable color variation, well at least intensity variation. And the paper and dust, it's more of a smeary watercolor brush. It's got little dust specks in it. And the more you kind of go backwards and forwards over your area, you're smearing your, your wet paint around, which is quite nice. To zoom in to give you an idea. And our Scribble and Screed has more of an intense texture to it. You can see the paper texture more intensely. So if you want more of a rugged kind of watercolor finish, this brush is really great for that. And I'm going to show you a trick with this brush as well. You can see all the just the various uh, watercolor effects you can get. So with this brush, if you choose a lighter color, I'm just gonna choose white, and you work on the same layer as your, your color you've just painted, works really well to push the, the kind of underneath paint aside, and you get some lovely dark edges Kind of mimicking that watercolor so that's a nice nice tip for that so the grit and grain block brush is really great for both adding color and doing some shadow work and what's really nice about this brush you get some good uh, variation in the texture depending on the pressure you apply so what I'm going to do is apply a new layer and I'm going to choose Kind of a brownie color and really light on my pencil I'm just almost smudging as I go as well 
And if we go really dark, we can apply a lot more ink. So we can use this brush in a smudgy way, or you can use this brush in a kind of flicky way, which is also quite handy. So just showing you on a lighter part, and there's some lovely little gritty bits in it, which makes it interesting. So you get some good grain and some smeary effects all at the same time. So as I said, that works really well for uh, some shadow work. And what I often like to do is just play around with the opacity layers, I mean the blending modes. Overlay often works quite nicely. And multiply if you want a more intense look. And even color burn gives you interesting results. And then just moving on to the rugged and wet. This is a really great brush for um, doing some smearing work, both while you're painting or using it as the smudge tool. And the more you lift your pencil, you're gonna apply more ink, and then you can just use it as a smudge as you're working, just to even out those areas. And then finally, um, well, not finally, these last two brushes. The blotchy accents work really well if you want to just create some, I'm just gonna make that a clipping mask, just to create some variation in um, your sort of watercolor work. And it's kind of like a cheat brush. It just add, adds lovely like patchy work to your color variation. And then finally a wash brush that's always handy to have so I'm just going to use a dark color with that in fact let's go really large and then what we can do is just turning on our effects layer we can smudge that out if we like and you can even use the same wash for the smudge if you want to do larger areas So these two brushes are quite versatile that way. Moving on to our texture brushes. I've just turned off the effects layer so you can see the texture. So the old diary has a really lovely, almost watermark kind of effect. And I also recommend not, not to lift your pencil as you work. You could and create more of a messy approach, which is also perfectly fine. And then if you're not so happy with those, whoops, we can always smudge that. In fact, what I like using sometimes on the texture brushes as a smudge tool is one of the shaders. And that just helps with the texture to retain that texture of the texture brush. And again, what we can do there is just push that ink into position. And then moving on to the old film, The more I push down on my pencil, the more that kind of grainy film texture appears. And if I lift the pressure on my pencil, there's, there's darker ink and less grain. So you can control how much you want the brush to show. And then Murky Window works really nice for Kind of really dirty, messy strokes. And these also work really well when you layer them. So I'm going to show you murky window over that one. Let's use a lighter, hmm, let's go with a lighter green. 
So using this as an overlay, you can get some really textured results and you can build it up depending on the look you're going for. And then finally, the last two brushes in the textures, we've got a fun, I'm gonna use that as an overlay. We've got a fun brush that has interesting texture. And you can come back and work over that to create a more intense sort of texture on top of that. This works really well in landscapes. You can kind of mimic sort of fields with this brush, which is quite handy. And then the dust brush, I'm just gonna choose a darker color, is really handy for some quick dust marks, some grungy markings. And then last but not least, we have some stamps. And these I really like using in clipping masks. So I'm gonna create a new layer set that to a clipping mask and I'm going to stamp out a brush and I love playing with the opacity and of course the blend modes of um, each layer gives some really interesting results. So I hope that gives you a good overview of the brushes. Next I want to dive into giving you some tips on how I use the brushes in my work and how you can create the same effect in your work. Earlier on, I mentioned that I often retain my rough sketch layer in my final piece. I'm going to show you how I did that for this piece. So that's my original rough. And this would be my uh, final line work. So for that rough, I generally turn it down, the opacity down. And I often like to set that to color burn. Sometimes I set it to multiply, but in this case, I'm going to set it to color burn. And you'll see it's already starting to interact with my background and my other line work. And then another trick I like to do with my final line work layer is duplicate that. And on that duplicate layer, I'm just going to blur it. So using Gaussian blur, I'm probably just going to set it to about 3%. So it kind of gives you that um, old style Gosh, I don't even know, one of those lino cut paint um, prints that you see. And then what I do is I set that to color burn. So that gives it a really interesting effect. And then set my original sketch layer quite low in opacity. So that when I do apply paint, is that you don't have such an overpowering kind of dominating line work but it is interacting really well with all your paintwork. And here you can see how it's, it's really got a lovely effect, you know, that kind of blurry look to it mixed with that um, color burn is giving it that really authentic vintage style look. And then another trick, as I mentioned earlier, when I was showing you those scratch brushes, I like to use them on their own layer and I like to control, as I said, the opacity of those brushes. So just coming back to, I'm gonna use a soft pencil and it's on its own layer and I've set it to linear burn. So that's a fairly intense uh, blending mode. And I just love just running the brush around the edges like this. Kind of gives it that messy print look to it and of course you can decide how much you want to add and here's an example of where i used the the harder um, pencil scratch so I just ran it along my stems and it creates that kind of etch work look to it. You'll see over here. 
And another trick that I wanted to show you with that hard pencil is using it as an eraser. So it's pretty handy if I just come back to one of these layers on my flower. So with the highlights layer, for example, I'm going to turn that up so you can see exactly what's going on. And just using a kind of a yellowy color coming down to the grit and grain block which I often like using for this kind of thing and I'm just light on my pencil pressure and then what I like to do is oops, choose as the eraser oops, the hard uh, pencil scratches and then I just simply run my pencil here and there through it and it creates those hard sort of lines. I hope you can see that on, on camera, which gives it a lovely effect, especially when you're working, I think you can see it better here, especially when you're working with flowers, it kind of gives you the, the vein effect of the flower. So that's quite a handy, a handy little tip. So when it comes to shadow work, to give my work a more of a vintage sepia kind of feel to it, I often use sepia brown in my shadow work. So I'm just going to turn that opacity up. Let me just turn on my leaf layers. I tend to leave it on normal, the blend mode. And this helps retain that sepia color. You can see I've used it here and there. And it blends quite nicely with the green. And then I just play with the opacity of that layer. And I often use the sepia color as stamps as well. And you'll see I've used a, a few here and there in the leaves. And in this instance, I actually use the blending mode that's overlay. So I'm going to show you an example just to create a new layer. Set that to a clipping mask. And I'm going to come down to my stamps. And I'll just use that one. I'm just going to stamp once. And you already see that that's already created quite an interesting effect. But that is fairly intense. So I'm just going to move it around into... A position that I like maybe something like that and then we can play with even that's quite interesting I like as I said I like overlay because it interacts with both the light and the dark areas of the painting but if we wanted to keep it much more true to the original sepia color you could either use darken or normal or even try one of the lighter blending modes. I think that's also creating quite interesting results. But in this instance, I'm going to stick to overlay. So that's quite a handy tip using sepia in your shadow to create that vintage look. And then just using bare as another example of where I use the scratch uh, brushes. So you'll see I use the hard scratch brushes here to create movement in the smoke of his pipe. And then here's another example of using the blend modes with the brushes. So if we look at the C, that was our original C color. And this I used the I used the grit and grain block brush. So all I did was I flicked up, kind of followed the stroke of the C, and then created another layer on top of that that was quite a light, almost white color. And I set that to overlay, and then that interacted very nicely with the layer underneath it. And again, you can play with the blending mode. And then just looking at his jacket, I just want to turn his pattern off. You'll see I layered brushes. So I first used 
our old diary and then on top of that I used murky window to create that kind of streaky effect so I started with the dark color using old diary and then on top of that I used murky window that final sort of light uh, green color to create those streaks so early on I mentioned how I love using the soft pencil scratches on the edge of my work I'm just going to zoom in to give you an example of how I used it here I just essentially ran it around you know most of her shapes just to follow the line of the artwork it just kind of gives it a, a, a sketchy um, look that makes it look like it's not just plonked on the page <laughs> it looks more blended in like somebody's worked the artwork and then coming down to the bottom, I used it quite a bit for her shadow work. Um, I just made sure to follow the same plane when I used uh, the brush, because of course you can always use it as a cross hatch if you'd like to. In fact, let's see if I can give you an example of that. I think I used that sepia color and that's my layer. So I'm just lightly with my pencil here and there making markings. If I wanted to, I could create kind of like a cross hatch effect, making sure that I'm working at the same angle each time. So that's also a lovely way to create some soft pencil work. Just another thing to consider when you're creating vintage style artwork is to choose your colors carefully because obviously it affects your final result. So you wanna give that impression of a bygone era. You also wanna make sure that your, your uh, details that you're using on your illustration, for example, this is a fashion illustration. So be sure to choose kind of clothing and patterns that were um, you know very popular in the area that you're trying to mimic all those details add up to the final look and then I just want to show you one more thing that I want you to consider when using the brushes don't be afraid to layer them and as I showed you previously also don't be afraid to use some of them um, you know as erasers because they work really well to create certain textures so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of a texture that I created for the in-between of this uh, tartan design and I started off with uh, the murky window and then I layered that with our grassland just to get that interesting texture onto it and then using the grubby cross hatch as an eraser I kind of very lightly just took away some of that um, sort of ink that we've already placed and that gives it more of a kind of material textured look so we don't have a solid color anymore we have something that looks like it's part of the fabric and I'm just going to do one more so I started with murky window went to the grassland And then just used my eraser to remove some of that ink. So definitely experiment. In fact, let's try a different variation of that. 
I'm going to try the Scribble and Screed as my first texture. Definitely not following the line work properly. Something like that. And then let's try the grassland as our eraser. I'm just lifting my pencil as I go, just to remove more as I work. And that's even a, another different texture. So definitely experiment with layering the brushes, experiment with using them as smudge tools and definitely as a raisin as well. I hope that was helpful and I hope you love using the kit and happy creating! <laughs>